Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Thanks, everybody. Again, you know, it's it really is. A, there's a lot going on, and of course, all of that on top of with us all having to deal with COVID as well. So, what I'm going to do is just give sort of some highlights of things that are happening on campus from the president's level on down. And um, that won't take all that long. Then we'll talk about some of the things, exciting things going on in the department. I'll, you know, if there's questions at that point, we'll take a few questions. And then I hope we can break up into some small groups and have some more focused discussions. And then if we have time, we'll get back together and, and talk about what people uh, thought about those. So with that, let me go ahead and get started. So uh, President Taylor Randall started uh, back in the fall. And originally he was scheduled, he's, you know, first president that I can ever remember that actually has tried to talk to uh, all the different colleges on campus. And we were originally scheduled to be one of the first and we ended up being one of the last. So he just met uh, with the faculty uh, last week in the College of Mines and Earth Sciences. So, you know, one of the things that happened in the prior administration is getting uh, selected as one of the top 64 universities, research universities, as part of the American Association of Universities. President Randall, um, his background is in business. He was the dean of the uh, School of Business. And so he's kind of approaching it in some respects in that manner. And, you know, he's since he, you know, took this position back in the fall, his message has been how can the University of Utah, you know, morph into being a top 10 type university and, you know, hear his language, you know are you a true top 10 public university or do you just have the impact of a top 10 university? And honestly, I haven't heard him describe this that much to know whether he's a proponent of either one. But I, one of the messages that he gave us last week that uh, we'll talk about a little bit more is he wants to be a top university with a college town feel meaning more students living on campus and being more involved. And I think that kind of, you know, flies in the reality of Utah has traditionally been sort of a commuter school. So we'll talk about uh, that, I think, and have you all discuss that. So his description of, you know, how this is supposed to happen is, of course, very student focused wanting to you know uh, get students to succeed and not take an inordinate amount of time he's very cognizant of the value of research and service and again you know also that we preserve sort of the character of the university moving forward so i think all those are very positive things now thinking about us you know in our department in our field one of the things is is that everything that the university is kind of oriented towards plays very well for us because atmospheric sciences is, is in this nexus of you know dealing with health safety and economic well-being and so last week you know the NOAA published the you know the billion dollar weather and climate disasters of 2021 there were 20 last year and, uh, you know, we had the fires, we had hurricanes, uh, you know, major severe storms. And that was, you know, besides, I mean, the, you know, loss of life and the impact on air quality and everything else is also the economic impact that our, you know, is associated with weather. So our field is very much involved in many of these things. So, it shouldn't come as any big surprise to, you know, as I go through these sort of who are we slides, um, you know, to be able to recognize how you all fit into that. We've had a mission statement that morphs around a little bit, but has been like this, you know, for a number of years. And, you know, it's basic, you know, we do both basic and applied research and trying to get that information out. And we're hopefully 
a benefit both not only to the people in Utah, but also nationwide and internationally. And those of you that are graduate students and faculty and staff that are involved in each of these areas that we, you know, that we kind of use as snippets of how uh, our department uh, uh, has uh, activity in, as well as the courses that we teach uh, related to all of these for our undergrads. Now, I mean, in just this month, there's been a lot going on. So, you know, Kevin was briefing uh, the legislators before the session started on sort of the impacts of the Great Salt Lake and the desiccation of the uh, surface and then the impact that that can have on air quality. And there's quite a bit of both legislative interest on both the state and national level about uh, you know, the desertification of uh, lakes in the Intermountain region. In addition to that, Zausha uh, and Eric Partiak in uh, mechanical engineering are leading the uh, CFACT field campaign that's going on right now. I'm sure they must, I mean, they just had an IOP, but they must still be having another IOP given the kind of conditions that's uh, in the Heber Valley right now. So it's a very basic study looking at the impact of and the form and causes of formation of, of wintertime fog in uh, uh, mountainous basins. And then Gannett, of course, is leading efforts at, at Storm Peak in uh, Steamboat Springs, uh, which it's been a painful process to transition Storm Peak from uh, being managed by the Desert Research Institute. Uh, we're paying the bills. We still aren't officially a, uh, a University of Utah facility, but it's getting close. But right now there's a bunch of people up there, the, including a group from Purdue and, and International and Texas, uh, West Texas A&M as well, uh, looking at snowflake formation. Uh, and so there's a team, you know, rotating teams of scientists up there right now. Thinking more broadly, if you just look at sort of the trends in research funding uh, of late, um, you know, it, this is, you know, has been one of our hallmarks for our department is the, you know, how we're all contributing to very stable research funding over time, much more so, you know, than uh, other departments on campus and, you know, second only to pharmacy. And the asterisk is because this is just through December for this year. So you can, I mean, we're kind of poised for this year uh, to have record uh, research funding. So successful uh, submission of proposals. And you can contrast that total of, you know, four to $6 million in research funding. Our base budget for state funding has stayed pretty flat over time. And it's on the order of a million and a half as far as straight state funding uh, for uh, you know, the core mission of the, uh, the department. One of the other interesting trends um, relative to other departments is how our enrollment has increased during the COVID era. Many departments, the enrollment numbers trend the other direction. Uh, so you can see that it was pretty flat through 19, uh, through 2019, 2020. And so much of it is because we're constrained by classroom size. We can't teach larger classes. So when we went into the COVID era and things shifted over to being more online, then there were the opportunity to have more and larger class sizes. So, the university requirement is that most, you know, that the you know large majority of classes are to be taught in person, and so we have sort of this tension between the fact that the reality of it is that many students really prefer to take the online classes, especially during this uh, COVID era, and and the timing of Jim uh, bringing on sort of the Atmos one thousand uh, class 
which is in spring of 21 and spring of 22, but it's Derek Malia, Gene Robel, John Lynn, Thomas Reichler have all been teaching other thousand level classes that have also had much higher enrollments than we've had in the, in the past. So that actually plays well for us. The other thing is this also has an impact on other courses um, where we have high enrollment again, because you take, I mean, even with the COVID kind of situation, we take away the restriction of having the classes need to be in our small classrooms. So Kevin's teaching, you know, two sections, one completely online and one in person. Um, energy water class, John Lynn and Gannett are teaching the atmospheric chemistry that's maxed out now at 40. Uh, Sebastian has got a cross-listed course for the mountain uh, weather, which is 66. Uh, I'm dealing with the in-person uh, environmental instrumentation class. Uh, we're having, uh, we're paying for Stephen Clark to teach the snow dynamics and avalanche course. And then uh, we have a record number of, of uh, grad, first year graduate students. So Cord is teaching uh, order 20. And all these numbers are numbers from last week. Things may have changed uh, along the way. What's also been pretty steady is, and, and Holly has done an amazing job you not only you know helping our students weather through the COVID period, but also uh, attracting other students. Uh, and so we've had very stable numbers of majors. You know it's around fifty or so, and this is done without any help from the admissions department. Um, and so we're hoping that we're going to have more opportunity to actually reach out to uh, prospectives, uh, you know, incoming high school students uh, this year than we ever have. We have uh, uh, stayed right around 40 grad students and, and you can get a sense of typical degrees. So the other thing is, and you know, if, if you think about the three aspects of any department in terms of research, uh, academics and outreach, you know, the stuff that my group does in terms of MesoWest, you know, if you do the bean counting, we've had uh, over 2 million users use what is now a very creaky set of software, accessing lots and lots of environmental information. But increasingly, the focus on air quality in this area, this is a, a mashup that Alex Jakes does, but involves John Lynn's group, Daniel Mendoza, Logan Mitchell. Uh, and a bunch of others. And so this includes the KS, this was yesterday. This is the KSL chopper with a, a PM sensor. This is um, two of the uh, tracks lines and they're first of the electric buses that all have sensors, as well as the purple air sensors and everything else. So that information's out there. And Daniel has a lot of activity going on with schools and other things. But the other very effective outreach is, of course, Jim's blog, which paralleling what the above figure shows, all the reds indicating the nasty air that we have, yesterday was definitely a day uh, to watch what you're breathing. Uh, Gannett uh, and many faculty and, and staff and students have been a big a part of increasing success of realm we hope that realm our summer reu program will actually be fully uh in person this year and you know they uh, uh were the cohort of them were here uh just for a week or so uh, this past year so that's another really substantial uh, positive that's going on so if that's who we are, then, you know, the next part is sort of like, well, so where are we going? And um, this is sort of boilerplate that we've been using, especially as far as uh, uh, getting the university to support a new faculty line. And so Kevin Perry is leading a committee that's evaluating a large number of applicants. And now they're winnowing through that. And the purpose was to get a new faculty member that addresses, you know, both both basic research as well as applied research in things that 
really matter. Climate change, water availability, air quality, wildfire. So, and maybe if we get really lucky, this will turn into a couple of positions over time. Uh, let's see what happened to my mouse. Um, this is something that's in the work, which is increasing coordination between College of Science and the College of Mines and Earth Sciences. So um, uh, uh, Dean Butt will be presumably talking more about this next week when he has a conversation uh, about these things. But it's uh, very exciting and shows uh, a level of coordination that just um, has never happened since I've been around to have a couple of colleges actually working more closely together instead of competing. And so John Lynn and Gannett Haller have been involved in a committee that's been looking at increasing coordination between biology, geology, and geophysics and atmospheric sciences. Um, whether this, and so to begin with, this may just be um, tweaking existing curricula in each of the three departments, but it will also probably involve a much stronger first year um, uh, getting undergraduates in their first year involved in research right off the bat. That's kind of a, a, a pedagogically is what people think the way to really uh, get people into STEM and keep them in STEM. So whether this turns into a school or a program or what it is, but it's, uh, it shows, uh, again, biology in the College of Science and then the other two programs here in College of Mines working together. How it's going to happen is still you know, in, in the works. The other thing is the uh, new Applied Sciences building. It'll come up, it'll have another name once a donor comes along that wants to fork out enough money to get the name. And so you've probably never paid any attention to the old Stewart building, which uh, was actually one of the oldest and is one of the oldest buildings on campus. Uh, the final uh, drawings and stuff are still in the works. I hope we'll see something this month. Um, they talk about this being finished in 2024. I don't know whether that's the case. So again, this is uh, to the south of the Crocker building and in between that and Pioneer Theater, the original Stewart building with a new wing. It'd be shared with physics and astronomy. Uh, state-of-the-art facilities, a rooftop classroom, instrumentation lab, and uh, sort of a nexus for us, the Utah Weather Center. Uh, this is just another way of looking at it. There's a lot of ideas as far as how this is all going to work and, you know, what's going to be where. But, you know, the Weather Center is a way to visualize information and get people excited, be available for outreach is, is a critical aspect of that. So along those lines, you know, for something, you know, we, there's nothing more, you know, in terms of details at this point, but there again is space for the weather center, which again would be a resource for students, uh, also a place where they can study and interact to get tutoring, et cetera. And, uh, you know, everybody would love to have a science on the sphere, or let's maybe even hope that something else comes along that's even better than that. So in presenting information to uh, President Randall from the college, each department was kind of tasked with, you know, thinking big. And so I'm, these weren't put in the context of being questions, but now, I mean, these are things that the faculty talked about uh, over the last couple of months. So I put them as question marks just because, you know, is this where we really want to be going? And I think you know, we do want to be the premier university for mountain weather research and education and mountain uh, climate research and education as well. And so can we? And then, of course, there's so much uh, legislative interest on things about air quality, the Great Salt Lake, uh, wildfires, drought in the West. Uh, we need to be involved in those kind of things. Uh, Daniel Mendoza is in particular heavily involved in terms of environmental justice issues, looking at uh, inequities in uh, air quality, I mean, you know, air pollution exposure. 
as a function of people uh, where they live in the Salt Lake Valley. Again, it is, I mean, it's kind of odd to have to even make this not be a priority, but again, the state legislature is really pushing for classes to be in person, even though there's also the demand for improved online course offerings. So Jim's class is an example uh, that shows how uh, that is something that students really want. And it takes effort. And Jim will be the first to explain how much effort is involved in doing it right. Uh, whether we're going to do more in terms of data science instrumentation, you know, we we were heavily involved in the 2002 Olympics. If the Olympics come back to Salt Lake, well, you know, or is the department going to be involved in that? And then, you know, especially this was tied into President Randall coming from business because um, there is a lot of interest to be able to show uh, how the work that's going on in our department has led to, you know, uh, startup companies you know, like Synoptic, uh, you know, that I've been involved with, Particle Flux Analytics that Tim Garrett spun off and Peter Veals uh, and his uh, snowmaking quantum snow. So with that, I'll stop and see if there are any questions through this part of it. And then... Uh, then we can kind of move into the next section. But any questions or comments at this point? I see one chat. Oh, that was just anything. I'm looking at the, I went into the, the instrumentation lab. So I have this big screen of just black boxes with names in it, you know. So, so if anybody wants to turn on their monitor and, and say something now or else save it until we break up into the small groups here in a minute. So, all right. Okay, hearing no questions. Okay, so now we'll turn it into sort of the, you know, what I hope will uh, get people more involved. And that's, well, what do you think? And so I'm going to pose it, you know, one, Thomas, if you can turn the recording off. Or let's see, maybe I have to since. Yeah, you have to do this. Man. Okay. Uh, hang on. Stop recording. Well, actually, I'm just going to let me try it again. I'm going to pause.